If you know every show on Netflix and you're broke, you have a problem. You're lazy. If you know every hit song that comes out and you're broke, you're lazy. If you know every single post on social media of other people's lives and you don't have another hustle that you're working, you have to accept the fact that you're lazy. Let me explain. To, let me go a little bit deeper with this on my own personal life. My hip hop music stops in 03. <laughs> me too. I'm being that serious me with too, you. I yeah. swear to God. Mine stops in 03. Yeah. My nightlife stops in 03. My chasing of women the way, the way I did stopped in 03. My desire to want to watch and consume every single sporting event that I never missed a Lakers game from the moment I came to the States. And when I joined the Army boot camp, obviously you can't watch TV. But then afterwards, I've never missed a Laker game from the age of being 12 years old coming to the States to the age of being 24 years old, 23 years old. Lakers was my religion. Sports stats was my religion. And I was broke. And my dad kept having heart attacks. And my dad worked at a 99 cent store on Manchester and Normandy while I'm working at Bally's 60 hours a week. I'm working at Bally's. I'm the top sales guy at Bally's because I wanted my dad to be done, but I couldn't make enough money. I was making three grand a month. But at the time when I was off, I wasn't working a side business. I was doing anything to entertain myself. Mm -hmm. We are fooling ourselves if we're going to sit there and just put all the responsibility on the people who have succeeded and not put any responsibility on the folks at the bottom that we're going to say, well, poor you, you're working so hard. But then how do you know so much about all these shows? I don't understand. I've never watched this Montana. What is this Montana show? What What is this show? Ozarks. That's Ozarks. What, Yellowstone. I, I don't even know what, I don't know what Yellowstone is. I've never watched uh, Breaking Bad. I've never watched uh, Sopranos. I've never watched an episode of Sopranos. The only series I've ever watched from 03 till today is House of Cards season one because people kept telling me I got to watch it. So as much as we want to sit there and say, oh, my gosh, poor me, poor this, poor that, which I come from a family where half of them were communist and half of them were imperialist. The one on the communist side, that's all they ever talked about. Their Bible was communist manifesto. Mm -hmm. And the ones on the right, they kept saying, you know, why don't you do something? Every time I, it was more f fun for me to talk to the communists than it was to talk to the conservatives because the communists would feel sorry for me and it was safe. And it was warm. Mm, yeah. It was fuzzy. It was so much better. Every time I went to the communists, they're like, oh, my gosh, you know, it's them. I'm like, that's right. You're right. And I would feel special. But every time I went and talked to these suckers on the other side, the conservatives, they were like, what are you doing about it? Why don't you make a change? Why don't you pick up a book? Why don't you get another job? Why don't, I'm like, bullshit. You don't understand. This is unfair. Eventually, I'm 23 years old, looking at my bank account, broke. And I said, which philosophy do you want to buy into, Pat? Which one do you want, want to buy into? Then I chose. So now, is there things on the elitist side that's happening as well? Sure. But for us to fool ourselves thinking people don't have any options to make a change. The, the wait, wait, wait. So how, but you skipped over the most important part. Okay, so you chose. You did, So what, how did sure. you get from Bally's to here? Like, what, t Walk me through that. I went into military uh -huh. and I got some discipline uh -huh. for two and a half years because mm -hmm. I didn't have it. Thank you for your service. By no, way. Anytime. So I got it. I needed it. So I think many boys who are undecided, military is a good choice okay. for them. I got out. When I got out, I worked at Bally's. While I'm working at Bally's. A guy named Robbie Solomon and my sister, my sister recommended me to read the book, How to Win Friends and Influence People. Mm -hmm. Keep in mind, I hate books. Till 21 years old, anybody who knows me from high school, they know I've never finished the book cover to cover. Mm -hmm. Never. I've never finished the book. I never finished, uh, uh, what is it, Of Mice of Men. <laughs> I never finished... Uh, 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 what's Fair the one with Nelly? Nelly petting is a Lenny. Lenny was <laughs> petting the rabbit. That's of yeah. mice and men. Okay, yeah. What was, the, book? What was yeah. the other one? The same book that he didn't finish. What's the one that was then? This the, 1984. Okay, no, no. Fahrenheit 451. You saying the books they assigned you Any, in high school? Uh, listen, I've never finished a book cover to cover. Mm -hmm. Never until 21. And Robbie said, "Read How to Master the Art of Selling" by Tom Hopkins, and I did. And then my sister said, How to Win Friends and Influence People. It's a good book to read. I read those two books. When I read those two books, I sat there and I said, This information is in a book for 10 bucks? Holy shit. Mm -hmm. What other recommendation you got? Next one. Next one. Rich Dad, Poor Dad. You know, Psycho Cybernetics. You know, Power versus Force. And I kept reading, 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 reading. And I'm like, This information is insane. 
Then I started realizing I'm making way too many excuses. I'm blaming the world for my problems. I'm not taking any responsibility. Some of the mindsets that my mother's side gave me is right. Some of it isn't right. Some of the mindsets that my dad gave me is right. Some of it isn't right. I stopped questioning things. And I said, listen, if I want my life to change, I got to make a decision about it. My parents brought me here to be free. My dad gave me work ethic. And next thing you know, I start, uh, 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 I'm dating a girl named Jean Vier who's working at Morgan Stanley Dean with her. And uh, I said, so why is it that, you know, you have all these nice cars? And she says, well, I work at Morgan Stanley Dean with us. I said, how can I get a job there? Uh-huh. She says, you need to go to UCLA. I said, I'm not going to school. She says, they're not going to hire you. I said, I'm not going to go to college. She says, you're not going to work at Morgan Stanley Dean with her. I said, let me see if I can find a creative way to get a job. So I went and printed my resume. Uh-huh. Okay, and I put a cover letter with a nice joke, getting creative. I faxed to 200 places, Goldman, Merrill, Smith, Barney, uh, TD Waterhouse, Morgan, all of these places. I got 30 callbacks. 15 of them laughed because the joke was funny. Yeah. The other 15 offered me an interview. Three gave me offers. At 21 years old, I started working on Morgan Stanley Dean with her a day before 9 11. So if you like this clip and you want to watch another one, click right here. And if you want to watch the entire podcast, click right here.